Hi guys, my name is Daniel Chiu and I'm from Vector Workbase. Today I'll be presenting on my project called Designing for the Future Through Adaptability and Flexibility. My site is located in the town of Johor Bahru in Johor. It is situated right next to the Customs Immigration and Quarantine Centre at Johor Bahru. This is the gateway in and out of Singapore for land travel. Every day, roughly 300,000 commuters make their way across the Causeway Bridge into Singapore. This makes it one of the busiest borders in the world. As cities around the world develop and grow bigger, they are faced with this issue called urban sprawling. Some of the indicators of sprawl include low density development with single purpose land use, randomness in development, also known as leapfrogging, discontinuous urban developments which are the result of inefficient planning, poor accessibility and lack public open spaces, as well as a high dependency on automobile. As you can see, Johor Bahru is not excluded from this issue. It is something you can feel and you know when you see one, but by the time it may be too late. In our site boundaries of study, there is a solid to void area ratio of 7 to 20. As you can see, within our boundary, there are a total of 16 parking lots, which covers an area of approximately 60,000 square meters and provides parking for 4,000 vehicles. This is an inefficient land use within the town due to the large area of single usage and is also one of the side effects of sprawling. Edmunds and Gogolsky viewed adaptable buildings as incorporating at the design and construction stage the ability to make future changes easily and within minimum expenses to meet the evolving needs of the occupants later in the life of the building. Gerwin, on the other hand, defines adaptability as an adaptive response to environmental uncertainty. Rapoport consider that adaptability seeks to establish basic system configurations that allow expansion and contraction of functional areas but always within established fixed constraints. Therefore, one thing is certain. Everything is constantly changing. This is principle one. We have to build for a future that we do not know yet, for needs we don't have now, with technical possibilities we have yet to discover. This is a picture of the causeway at Johor Bahru back in June 1924. If we were thrown back in time, could we have predicted how Johor Bahru would look like after 100 years? How would Johor Bahru look like in the year 2100? What will we want from our buildings in the next 100 years? How we live, work, and enjoy leisure is not static but dynamic, innovative, and unpredictable. The second principle is building for change can only happen if we make a distinction between the base building and the fit out. The base building consists of the concrete foundations and skeleton, the utility connections, and the facade. This is the responsibility of the investor. The fit-out, on the other hand, is done by the user. Facilities, decoration, furniture, 
and spaces to make it livable, workable or enjoyable is then created according to the needs. Ultimately, a building should have a circular life cycle that does not end in demolition, but rather renovation upon renovation. A case study similar to these principles can be found at Vondel Park in Amsterdam. This project is called Solids 11. The project is one of the three new buildings master planned by Belgian architect Joe Crepain on the site of a former hospital. Solids represents a new typology in the Netherlands, which provides reconfigurable spaces for many different types of use in a highly durable building fabric. The client Stagnot required the main elements of the building to have a 200-year lifespan. Some questions that got me thinking. Can owning a home, office or any space not be tied to a permanent location? Are small office, flexible office really flexible? Should buildings always have a fixed function from the start? Can a production line exist at a transit-oriented development? How many years should a building last? After months of back and forth designing, I finally come up with a design solution and it is the Commuters Hub. This Commuters Hub caters to the fast and hectic lifestyle of the commuters who travel daily between Singapore and Malaysia. Situated right next to CIQ, this is the perfect location for commuters to end their day of work. This building has been built with a post and beam structure where container lots are allocated to be used as homes or offices. This building comes with a production line that renovates and retrofits containers according to the customer's needs. Once completed, these containers can be lifted up to a chosen lot. Services such as water, gas and electricity shall be joined to the containers through a standard connection point. The reason why I choose containers as the units are because of its universal standardization. This allows easy shipment and transportation to various places around the world. Imagine working in Johor Bahru this month and moving to Australia the next. This unit can be transported anywhere you like, provided that there is a base building present. This allows for flexibility and adaptability, where our future is uncertain. At the start of the semester, there were still hundreds of thousands travelling between Malaysia and Singapore. But due to the lockdown and border control, currently, there are no commuters going back and forth. This building would have been a failure if it was not being used. But since needs can be changed and spaces can be reconfigured, it could also become a quarantine centre for those returning to Malaysia. That is one of the advantages of separating the base building from the fit-up. Imagine a global network of base buildings in every country located at every transit-oriented development. Being able to bring your homes and office to any country you like to work wherever you want. That is the goal of this project. Thank you.